It is well with my children and me. As I was praying and reading my Bible this morning, I had so many questions in my heart, and I wanted to know what was in the heart of God. I looked at our fallen world, and I see so much suffering around me, and especially so much suffering of women and their children, when the father of those children is bailed out. I did not want to focus on the action of the man, but I wanted to know what God had to say about these countless women and their children who have been left on their own. I cried out to the Lord, What do you have to say, Jesus? Chapter 1 A Real Life Experience on January the 2nd, 2012, I visited a family, and we had a really good time. We laughed and just enjoyed the time spent with each other. One of the brethren who was there was a young gentleman of 80 years old. He started to share his life story with us, to give us some knowledge of the mistakes he had made in his life, and how he wished there was a time machine to go back and amend them. The 80-year-old gentleman is living on his own today and has no one to talk to at home. His children do not want to see him at all. We all wondered what had happened to this brother, that he had such a bad relationship with his children. He explained to us that when he was younger, in the 60s, he had four children with a woman. But he was a player. So he broke the heart of that little woman and left her with all the children because he thought she was hindering him. She was not allowing him to have his freedom to do the things he wanted to do. So he turned his back on both the woman and the children. The woman struggled with the children. They are all grown up today and have their own children too. The 80-year-old gentleman told us that he does not understand why his children are mad at him, why they do not want to have anything to do with him. He has bought two cars for two of them. They took the cars, but they still do not want him around them. He thought that by lavishing them with gifts, he would buy their affection, and they will include him in their lives and the lives of his grandchildren. But all his attempts have been to no avail, so he had red eyes and tears were coming down his cheeks when sharing his life story with us. When he had finished sharing all his life experience with us, and how lonely he is today, and how he used to send money to his relatives back in the Caribbean where he came from, he thought that they were the ones who truly loved him. But... Today, now that he is 80, he understands that the people back home were only exploiting him. That they were making him feel good, and that he was their saviour, and they were literally worshipping him for all he was doing for them. But, as soon as he was not able to send them money, their love waxed cold toward him. They were no longer adulating him. His so-called friends and relatives that once praised him beyond what was merited were nowhere to be found. He realized that he was alone. His nephews were taking care of their parents, they were visiting and calling their parents, and he had nobody calling him or visiting him. Although he used to send the money to them, but they did not remember him any more. I did not want to offend him, but there was a great and long silence in the living room where we all sat. We could hear the tick-tock of the clock. I finally opened my mouth and said to the brother, since he was not a Christian, The Bible says he should not hide from our flesh. Isaiah 58 verse 7 I'll call him Bob, but it's not his real name. I said, Bob, your children are your flesh and your blood. I know that the people back in the Caribbean are also your relatives, but your priority was your children, to clothe them, feed them, and be there for them. Your priorities were not right. No matter how little we earn, the priority is to provide for our wife and children, for he that cannot provide for his own household is worse than an infidel. 1 Timothy 5 verse 8 Bob shared with us that he was only earning £30 a week back then in the 60s. 
The Bible tells us, Better is a dinner of herbs, vegetables, where love is, than a stalled ox, ox kept in a stable. Proverbs 15, verse 17. I said, Bob, the children were not asking you for fancy food for dinner. They would have been happy even to be eating cassava leaves with you. Eat the yam, cassava roots, or sorrel, or even matambele. They would have liked the cow foot for dinner instead of a beef steak. I told him, Bob, in the Caribbean, because the people were poor and could not afford to buy meat, that is why they used to cook cow's feet. And it's a national dish. So you see, Bob, the children did not want the beef steak and all the expensive food. They would have been content with dinners of herbs and, as a treat, the cow's foot, a traditional dish from the Caribbean. But what they wanted was your love and your presence. Bob told me that now he goes and cooks some Caribbean food for his children and grandchildren, but they are still not receiving him properly. I said to Bob, they know that it is only because you are lonely and have been forsaken by all your so-called relatives, and that as a last resort you are now coming to them, trying to cook traditional food, buying them cars. Nobody can buy affection that a parent has with a child. I said to Bob, the children are all grown up. They are in their forties and even the grandchildren are already in their teenage years. It is difficult to rebuild a relationship when you've been out of the picture for so long. I said, Bob, the children are angry because when you left their mum and stopped providing for them, you chose to provide for all those people who were adulating you. They felt rejected, they asked themselves so many questions, and they even blamed themselves, asking within them, is it because I was born that my father left the house? Maybe I ruined the plans of my father at my birth. Maybe he did not want me at all. Maybe it's because we were unruly children that father left the house. And then Bob confessed that he used to say that they were unruly children. I said, Bob, this is what was going on in the heads of those children when you left them with their mum. They asked questions of their mum about the reasons why you were no longer coming back home. But she explained the best she could. Today the children have been able to overcome the trauma of their childhood and they have built their lives, married and have their own children. They just want to forget about the past, the wounds. So Bob understood all that. I said, Bob, you are now a Christian. Do yourself a favor. Forgive yourself for the mistakes, for the way you let all of them down, because God has forgiven you, and be there for them. He told me one of his granddaughters, who is 21 years old, is now calling him often, because she has many questions about Jesus. I said, Bob, this is God opening a door to restore a relationship with your grandchildren. You blew it with your children, but you can make it right with your grandchildren. I said, Bob, God is the God of the second chance. Even if you are 80 years old, God can restore your relationship with your family. You will no longer celebrate your birthdays alone, but your children and your grandchildren will celebrate them with you. Deep inside me, I know that life is not always a bed of roses for many women and their children when their father is no longer in the picture. They have loved the man with all their heart, but he just keeps dealing treacherously with them and has broken the vows. Malachi 2 verse 14 The woman and her children have no power over the man's will to force him to come home, for he thinks what he is doing is right. When I got home, I was praying and I could not stop thinking about the pain that woman and her children went through. Tears came to my eyes as I thought about countless other women and children who are in that situation.
I pray that it would be well with them, but especially for those who are in Christ, that it shall be well with them. And I heard the Lord telling me that for those who are in Christ, it shall be with their children and them. Chapter 2. Stop Blaming Yourself Many times things happened to us when we were not born again Christians. We had a child or children out of wedlock. And the father of the child told us we were not good enough for him, or he did not want to have that child, or we have tricked him. From the very beginning of the world, man has always been accusing the woman for everything. When Adam and Eve had both partaken of the fruit of the forbidden tree, for Adam was with Eve when the serpent talked with her, and he said nothing to prevent the serpent from deceiving them. Genesis 3, 1-6 Adam knew exactly what he was doing and the consequences of his actions. The Bible tells us clearly, and Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. 1 Timothy 2, verse 14 Adam was never deceived. He knew exactly what he was doing. But when God asked Adam, What have you done? He answered, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I ate. Genesis 3 verse 12 Many women still beat themselves over the fact that they have a child and the man did not want it. Do not beat yourself, sisters. Many men like Adam want to shun their responsibilities. They knew exactly what they were getting into. It takes two to have a pregnancy. The Bible reminds us that Adam was not deceived, but he still blamed Eve and God who gave her to him. Many men will run away from their responsibilities like Adam and blame other people. They blame their relatives for putting pressure on them, and they cannot say no to them. They have to do what they are asking them to do. Adam had the authority to stop the serpent from destroying his home, but he did nothing. He allowed it to happen. Many people allow external and harmful voices like that of the serpent to destroy their home. So sisters, do not beat yourselves up over the children or the pregnancy. The man was not deceived. Whatever a man sows, that shall he reap. Galatians 6 verse 7 the man sowed his seed. He can only expect a pregnancy. So we clearly see that the two knew what they were doing. God blamed Adam and Eve for their sin. Genesis three fourteen to 19 Adam wanted to blame Eve for everything, but God, who is just, said they were both to be blamed. But especially Adam, for though Eve was deceived, he was not deceived. Chapter 3, Hagar and Ishmael, Genesis 16 I knew a dear sister who had two beautiful daughters with different men before she came to the Lord. When she came to the Lord, she had so many questions. A so-called brother in her church wanted to marry her, but he came to her with this scripture, Cast out the bondwoman and her son, Galatians 4 verse 30. So he interpreted the scripture to her, saying, Sister, you need to send your children back to Africa to live with your parents, because they were born when you were not Christian. I'll marry you only if you send them back to Africa, because I want you, but not your children. The sister was so desperate to be married, and the so-called brother was handsome according to her words. So she thought about sending her beautiful little girls to Africa just to please that so-called brother. But she had the common sense to phone Brother G. She said, G, I have met someone who wants to marry me, and I really like him. He is handsome. He puts on nice suits. He is very spiritual. He can quote lots of scriptures, and furthermore, he is the associate pastor in our church. But he wants me to cast out the bondwoman and her son, so I'll be sending my children to Africa to live with my mum and get married to that man. I had these children in my unsaved life, so I'll send them to my parents. 
I said, Sister, this is not the meaning of that scripture. The man is twisting that scripture. So let's say that it is the meaning. Cast out the bondwoman and his son, so the man should not marry you either, since according to his interpretation, you are Hagar, and your two sweet girls are Ishmael. And then it dawned that it was not only Ishmael, but Hagar was also cast out. So I said to her sister, forget about that brother. A man that God has ordained for you will love you and your children. Then what is the true heart of God concerning Hagar and Ishmael, her son? If we know what God's heart is toward them, it will help us in life. Abraham and Sarah were the spiritual people. They were the people of God, and they knew the will of God and the promises of God in their life. Unfortunately, they were not patient enough. They wanted to bring their miracle about by their own means. So Sarah told Abraham to go to their slave girl, Hagar, so that she would give him a child. Hagar was not in the covenant of Abraham, for she was an Egyptian slave. Father Abraham made a mistake, but the child that resulted from the mistake of Father Abraham was never a mistake. When we were unsaved, or even when we were saved like Father Abraham, the children that we had from different unions, either married or unmarried, were our mistakes because we sinned by committing adultery or fornication, but the child is never a mistake. God does not condone our sins or the sin of Father Abraham, but the son that resulted is never a mistake. The child is accepted by Jesus, our beloved. Ephesians 1 verse 6 The entire Godhead accepts that child, but disapproves of the sin of adultery or fornication. We should never think that our children are a mistake. Never! They are gifts from God, and they are accepted by God just like any other child. So no matter what the circumstances were surrounding the birth of that child, that child's birth is never a mistake. Sarah realized her mistake and started to mistreat Hagar. Hagar had to run from Abraham and Sarah, and she went into the wilderness with the child. There might have been many questions in the head of Hagar. Abraham only used me. He just wanted to have a good time with me. He never wanted to have this child with me. Maybe this child is a mistake, since what I did with Abraham was a mistake. If a person believes that his child or her child is a mistake and has arrived to ruin all his or her plans, he or she will never love that child. Yes, we cannot overly emphasize that what Abraham did was wrong. Adultery and fornication is wrong. But the child is a new life that directly comes from God. God has accepted that child like any other child that comes into this world. There is nothing wrong with that child. Even when the parents say it was an unwanted pregnancy, God wants that child and accepts the child. Jesus in person comes to show the world that he has accepted the little child Ishmael. The Bible says, Now the angel of the Lord found Hagar by a spring of water in the wilderness. Genesis 16 verse 7 The angel of the Lord or the angel of his presence is Jesus Christ. Isaiah 63 verse 9, Exodus 33 verse 14, Exodus 23 verse 20 to 23 and Judges 13 verse 20 to 23. So Jesus appeared to Hagar and Ishmael and Jesus who is the angel of the Lord blessed Ishmael. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Hagar, Behold, you are with child and shall bear a son and you shall call his name Ishmael because the Lord has heard your affliction. Genesis 16 verse 11 So it does not matter if the father blessed the child or not, if the father names the child or not. Jesus, who is the angel of the Lord, names the child and blesses the child. 
Now, my sister, the child that you are carrying in your womb or that you have conceived is accepted in the beloved Jesus. Jesus in person has blessed the child with every spiritual blessing in heavenly places. Ephesians 1 verse 3. Sister, it is and it shall be well with you and your child, with you and all your children, because God has heard your afflictions. After Isaac was born, Sarah decided to ask Abraham to cast out Hagar and her son Ishmael, for she did not want him to inherit Abraham's wealth. Genesis 21 verse 10 Father Abraham, with all the wealth he had, did not even think of providing enough for Hagar and Ishmael. He did not even send one of his servants with donkeys to drive Hagar and Ishmael to a safe place and give them some money to start their new life. Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a water bottle made of skin and put it on the shoulder of Hagar and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered into the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the skin was used up, and Hagar placed Ishmael under the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from Ishmael at a distance, about a bow shot, for she said to herself, Let me not see the death of Ishmael. So she sat opposite and lifted up her voice and wept. Genesis 21 verse 14 to 16 To be continued